Good afternoon po ulit sa ating lahat. Ayan. Um, it's good to know that uh, you are here using your free time to learn during this pandemic. This webinar is about cybersecurity awareness by the Department of Information and Communications Technology, DICT, in partnership with Central Zone State University, CLSU. This webinar is uh, very timely and relevant, uh, relevant since, we are use, uh, since we are doing things online. So be it school works, uh, business, and office works. Okay, so ready na kayo guys? If you are guys are ready, just comment, yes, your, just comment your reactions below so that we can know that you are there. Okay? All right. So let's start with the objectives. Okay, so objective number one, as part of the implementation of the fourth pillar of the National Cybersecurity Plan 2022 and NCSP, which is the protection of each individual. Number two is that it aim, aim is to raise the level of awareness of the public on the importance of cybersecurity and to help educate, empower, and protect the individuals in cyberspace. Okay, so this, uh, this is the outline kung ano yung pag-uusapan or ano yung mangyayari sa atin ngayong uh, maghapon na to sa webinar. Okay, so number one, acknowledgement of participants, uh, webinar guidelines and reminders, opening remarks, how to be cyber safe, setting up a secured environment, Q&A, uh, our forum, closing remarks, and then again, webinar guidelines and reminders. Okay, so before I read these guidelines and reminders, ayan, I, I would like to acknowledge all of the participants na nandito, CLSU students, ayan, yung mga speakers natin, and other DICT personnel, pati mga higher up sa CLSU. All right, so guideline number one and uh, guideline or reminder number one is that be informed that this web, uh, webinar is recorded for documentation purposes. Live streaming or recording of this webinar will be posted via YouTube. Number two class or guys is that please turn on microphone and camera when joining through Google Meet to minimize the interference. And number three, do not share your screen or do any annotations. Number four, questions can be asked throughout the webinar through our chat box. Okay, dito sa Google Meet, pwede kayo dyan mag-chat. And Q&A form at URL. Right, so ito yung URL, guys. So pwede kayo dong mag-ask ng mga questions. So we'll have a Q&A portion after the presentation. Next, regarding the digital certificates, it will be provided to those who have attended the full duration of webinar, answer the post-evaluation form, pass the quiz with at least 70% points. Okay, so ayun, um, again, reminder lang, for you to get a digital certificate, kailangan makakomply kayo dun sa mga uh, requirements na yun. Okay, next. Use the webinar code posted on screen to access the post-evaluation form. And then, input valid and active email address when filling out our post-evaluation form. So, ang cut-off po ng DACP is 4 p.m. until October 9, 2020. Nakalagay na din po dun yung URL. And then, last one, observe proper decorum and netiquette. Okay, so to continue, okay, so uh, Department of Information and Communications Technology, DICT, ayan. So the mandate of the DICT, okay, the DICT shall be the primary policy, planning, coordinating, implementing, and administrative entity of the executive branch of the government that will plan develop and promote the national ICT 
Development Agenda. So this is the RA or Republic Act 10 8, uh, 84, uh, 844. Okay, so programs and projects. So uh, ito yung mga ilan sa mga programs and projects ng DICT like Free Wi-Fi for All, Tech for Ed, EBPLS, and etc. And then we have Central Luzon State University, CLSU. Okay, so the mandate of CLSU, the university shall primarily give professional and technical training in agriculture and mechanic part, me mechanic arts, besides providing advanced instruction and promoting research in literature, philosophy, the, the sciences, technology, and arts. Okay, so um, here are some of the programs and projects of CLSU. So we have Center for Transboundary Animal Diseases, Smart Farming and Precision Agriculture, and many more. Okay. Okay, so to formally uh, start this webinar, okay, I'm going to call on our, our speaker. So Dr. Edgar A. Orden was supposed to give the opening remarks. So he is the, he is our uh, president of the university, CLSU president. But unfortunately, he can't make it today. That's why. Um, Dr. Nemesio A. Makabale Jr., the director of the Information Systems and Institute, a professor six instruct professor six in information technology, uh, in Central Luzon State University, will give the opening remarks. Okay. Good afternoon. Uh, the picture you are looking at the moment is a bit younger than me. So during the COVID, I, I had this uh, <clears throat> with my uh, this, uh, mustache and bird. Anyway, good morning. Uh, good afternoon to everyone. Good afternoon, uh, sir. Is, yeah, good afternoon. This is Cybersecurity Awareness Seminar um, to the DICT Regional Director, uh, Mr. Reynaldo TC, to the DICT Provincial Officer, Maria Sinag Abello, to the resource persons, Anjanet Marie Reyes and Dario Justin Caparas, uh, to the CLSU University officials, colleagues, and students. Good afternoon again. In behalf of uh, Central Luzon State University Information S Systems Institute, I would like to welcome you in this uh, webinar. During this pandemic, cybersecurity awareness has become more important than ever for more people have moved from their office or schools to their homes they have utilized more the cyberspace to connect to their studies and work interact with classmates teachers and colleagues or shop online or simply perform other business transactions accordingly um Incidents of cybersecurity attacks, such as phishing, smishing, scamming, or uh, attacks from malware, ransomware, spyware, have uh, tremendously increased as well, resulting to greater loss of money, time, data, and privacy. So this uh, cybersecurity awareness uh, webinar is uh, very timely. We appreciate the effort of the DICT to partner with Central Luzon State University to give you this webinar that you may become aware of these issues and take the necessary actions and tools uh, that we may mitigate, if not eliminate, the ill effects brought by these threats. Again, thank you very much and stay safe. Good afternoon. All right. So thank you for the opening remarks, uh, Dr. Nemesio A. Makabale Jr. Okay. So moving on. Okay, so again, um, everyone, kindly turn off po yung mic and um, webcam so that uh, we can avoid interference. 
Okay, so this webinar, um, two parts siya. So for the first part, okay, we are going to talk about how to be cyber safe. Okay, so this speaker that I'm about to introduce, okay, so she graduated with a bachelor's degree in consular and diplomatic affairs from the De La Salle College, College of St. Benilde. Although an international affairs graduate, she immediately started her cybersecurity journey with the DICT in 2016. She is also a graduate of the executive course on the application of international law in cyber operations in Bangkok, Thailand, and the alumni workshop on international law, norms and capacity building measures applicable to cyber operations in Singapore. She's, she's an alumna of the cyber investigative training course conducted by the U.S. Federal Bureau of Investigation and is also trained under the Asia-Pacific Information and Security Training course in Seoul, South Korea. She is the Public Information, Education, and Communications Lead of the DICT Cybersecurity Bureau. Clea is mostly involved with the Cybersecurity Advocacy Campaign, the Cybersecurity Academy Initiative, and various projects and policies relative to cybersecurity. Okay, so without any further ado, I give you Miss Anjanette Clea Marie G. Reyes. Ayan. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Narinig po ba ako? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so ayan. Thank you, everyone, for being with us this afternoon. Thank you rin po, Sir Amir, for introducing me. So again, I'm Clea from the DICT Cybersecurity Bureau, and I'm particularly involved with the Cybersecurity Awareness and Advocacy Team. Um, part of our duty is to reach as many individuals as possible about cybersecurity. Bakit? Kasi cybersecurity is everyone's concern. Actually, may nakita nga akong question kanina sa Google form. Ang sabi, what is cybersecurity and why is it important? Okay, so we will answer that in my presentation. So I hope you listen, relax lang kayo, and enjoy the chilly weather. I don't know if maulan-ulan din dyan sa inyo. Ito kasi sa amin medyo maulan, so apologies in advance if malalag ako during my presentation. So, okay. Chat nyo lang yung questions nyo. Okay? So, let's begin. Let me put up my slides. Okay. Okay, Ma'am Clea, you present po. Yes. Ayan, can you see my slide? Okay na? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you, Sir Amir. Okay, so today... I'll be discussing cybersecurity awareness, how to be cyber safe, especially nowadays na nag-increase na ang ating screen time because of the COVID crisis. So, paano ba tayo maging safe? So, this is our reality today. The COVID-19 pandemic pushed us to change the way we live. So, living in this so-called new normal, um, kamusta na po ba tayo? How are we doing? Meron na po ba tayong mga na-discover na hidden talents? O kaya naman, we are following our hearts and adding to cart. Ayan. Or are we supporting our friends' online businesses? Diba? Marami ng mga businesses ngayon na pinapalike ang ating mga friends. Well, actually, way before the pandemic happened, immersed naman at engaged na tayo sa ating mga gadgets and in the cyberspace or the internet. Years ago, we already had cyber-related cases and incidents, di ba? Hindi rin naman bago sa atin yung online classes or online learning, tsaka work from home. 
And of course, meeting people online is not new. Dati pa naman, di ba, yung may mga long-distance relationship, yung mga nagkikita at nagkakakilala online. Okay, kaya yung mga baguhan ngayon sa LDR, stay strong lang kayo, okay? Okay, what else? Oh, October 8 ngayon, two days na lang, 10-10 sale na sa Shopee at Lazada. Okay, may mga masaskam na naman ng 10-10 sales. Pero di ba, last year pa naman tayo nag-aabang ng mga ganyan, yung mga 11-11, 12-12. So hindi bago sa atin yan. But now, when the pandemic arrived, our dependence to ICT increased. So because of logistical limitations, so hindi na pwede basta-basta lumabas ng bahay, and we have um, very strict curfews in place, we became more reliant sa ating mga gadgets at sa mga online services. So aside from depending on online services for our essentials, dahil nga nasa bahay lang tayo, we spend more time on the internet for our entertainment or para libangan, di ba? Before kung, let's say, nakaka one or three episodes per day lang tayo pag nanonood sa Netflix. Baka ngayon, one or two seasons kaya na sa isang araw. Diba? Para, baka yung iba sa inyo marunong nang mag-anyong, bogoship da, diba? Dahil kaka-k-drama, okay? So kung dati, babad na nga tayo, napapagalitan kasi kaka-computer nyo yan. Ngayon, mas nag-increase pa ang ating online activities. And this um, July 2020 data from Hootsuite and We Are Social, shows the growing dependence of individuals to the internet and their devices in selected countries and worldwide. Yeah. So here we see a 70% increase in time spent on mobile phones, 47% on laptops, 33% increase in desktop, 32% increase in media streaming. So dyan na nga yung mga like Netflix, ayan kahit sa tablets, game consoles, smart speaker, and smartwatch, may mga increase din ang usage. And this next data shows how those gadgets mentioned kanina actually help people cope during the pandemic. So ayan, nakalist dito ang mga activities na ginagawa online. So 83% says that it helps them stay looked in sa mga COVID-19 updates. 76% claims that it helps them with their children's education. So, kayo mga nag online class. 74% says that it helps them to keep in touch with friends and family. And others says that it helps with work, for entertainment, for shopping, groceries, mental health, ano pa, access to health care, then, syempre, exercise to keep them fit. And last for income and finances. So dito, we see how the pandemic affected us in a lot of ways. So these past few months, talagang we have shifted from the kinetic or physical world to the cyberspace. And as we continue to grow dependent on our gadgets and on the internet, mas nag-grow din yung chance of us in becoming victims. And we must understand that we are all vulnerable to online threats, okay? Dapat maisip po natin na someday we can be a victim kasi as human as we are, pwedeng-pwede po tayong maloko, okay? Masakit man isipin, pero totoo po yun. And the question is not if you are going to be a victim, but when, okay? Kailan? Kailan ka mabibiktima? So right now, I will be giving you a picture on the world's uh, cybersecurity landscape. Now, did you know that data is now more valuable than oil and is the most expensive asset in the world? Baka familiar kayo sa Facebook Cambridge Analytica data scandal. When you watch the documentary, and um, I encourage you to, ang title niya is The Great Hack. It's available on Netflix. Di ko lang alam kung nandun pa ngayon. Kasi marami na tinatanggal na shows dun eh. So pag pinanood nyo ang documentary na yun, you will get a picture of how the public's data was used for uh, major global political issues like the 2016 US presidential election 
and the Brexit. So pinapakita doon na those events really proved um, the value of data and why data rights are human rights. Okay, and four years ago, okay, baka familiar kayo dito, the Central Bank of Bangladesh fell victim to one of the largest cyber heists in history. And the Philippines is actually involved here. So if you remember, we also, we had a Senate probe, which is the RCBC Senate probe in 2016. Bakit? Kasi 81 million USD ang napunta sa RCBC. So the infamous heist was linked to a malware attack known as Drydex, which compromised the bank software na ginagamit to transfer funds. So in 2018, another cyber heist occurred where cyber criminals hacked the banks of 28 countries, including India's Cosmos Bank. They were able to get 13.5 million USD. So nang dahil sa malware infection, na bypass yung security features ng bank system. Then another global cyber attack that earned its um, infamy for its impact. If you remember not Petya, it is a malware that initially guised itself as a ransomware. Meaning if nakapagbayad na ang victims sa cyber criminals, their files will be decrypted. Pero not Petya is in fact a wiperware or wiper malware, which means designed talaga siya para burahin yung files ng victim once na maapektuhan ito. So even if nakapagbayad ka na, your files will no longer be decrypted kasi it was already destroyed the moment na naapektuhan yon. So, in 2017, around uh, 50,000 company laptops of the Danish shipping giant Maersk, okay, hindi ko lang kung ganun pronunciation niya, was affected and its data got destroyed by NotPetya. So, because nasira yung computer system ng Maersk, the ground staff had to uh, manually check the containers kasi burado na yung data nila dahil sa malware. And around that time, buti nagka ano, um, power shortage sa capital ng Nigeria para hindi totally and entirely nasira yung buong network infra ng Maersk. Okay. So here's another cyber attack in 2018. Okay. Two years ago, 1.5 million medical records were stolen from SingHealth, Singapore's major health system. Kasama yung data ng Prime Minister. So dito, lahat talaga vulnerable kasi even a very cyber-advanced country like Singapore can suffer a major data breach. Okay, ito. So this cyber threat is in the Philippine setting. So baka... Um, nakikita nyo rin yan or familiar din kayo dyan. So, hindi kasi lahat ng cyber criminals pera ang habol. Ang iba sa kanila, they use cyber threats like this web defacement for political goals para i-push yung pinaglalaban nila. And here, yan nga, we see the infamous Pinoy Lulzek defacing government websites. So, ayan, kita po natin how countries get affected with cyber threats. No one is excused or exempted kasi talaga all of us are vulnerable. And of course, the first step in protecting yourself is to know what you are protecting yourself from. We should know ano ba yung mga threats or attacks that we should be aware of para ma-prevent natin to or maiwasan natin to. Diba? Knowledge is power. Awareness is key. Okay? And... What are we protecting ourselves from? So we are protecting ourselves from cyber attacks. So cyber attack is the deliberate exploitation of computer systems, technology dependent enterprises, and networks. Cyber attacks use malicious codes that has disruptive consequences, which compromises data and lead to cyber crimes, such as information and identity theft. So in other words, a cyber attack is an assault launched by cyber criminals using ICT. And here we have common cyber threats that we should be aware of, okay? 
So, kanina na-mention ko yung malware, wiperware, ransomware. So, ayan, malware or malicious software um, intends to damage or disable computers and computer systems. Hacking is the unauthorized or illegal access to data or information in a system, device, or account. Then, social engineering is the psychological manipulation of people into divulging personal or confidential information that may be used for fraudulent purposes. So, in social engineering, may sasabihin or gagawin yung attacker that will lead the victim to give them the details they need. Ayan. So, now, while these are the most common cyber threats, it's important to know, ano pa ba yung iba pang mga cyber threats? Ayan. And these are five other cyber threats that you should watch out for. So, kanina, na-mention ko na ang ransomware. So, it is a subset of malware in which the data on a victim's computer is locked, typically by encryption. And payment is demanded before the data is decrypted and access returned to the victim. So yun nga, earlier I've mentioned the not petty attack, which is um, a malware na nagkunwaring ransomware. May cyber incident kasi na nauna before yung not petty. You may remember the ano yun? 2017 WannaCry incident. Okay, everyone was actually scared and panicking kasi who knows who will get attacked. The thing about ransomware kasi, you know na nabiktima ka kasi the hacker demands something in return. Okay, so in exchange for your files, usually ask for Bitcoin as payment kasi the transaction is hard to trace. What happened in WannaCry emphasized kung gano'n ka-important mag-update ng operating system or ng OS kasi those that were exploited is yung mga lower versions of Windows. So when you fall victim um, to ransomware, important that once you get notified is um, you turn off or unplug your device because it could somehow help the encrypt stop the encryption process. Um, it's also important that you report the attack to the proper authorities. Okay? And also remember, please do not pay ransom. Kasi this will um, only encourage the cyber criminals. And you are not even sure if your files or data will be recovered or if babalik ba talaga nila to sa you. Okay? Next. The man in the middle attack. So, this attack happens when a hacker intercepts the communication between two parties. So, most common sample, connecting to a public Wi-Fi or network. Ang pwedeng gawin ng hacker ay i-compromise yung network by pretending to be a public Wi-Fi para sa kanila ka mag-connect instead of the legit public Wi-Fi. And then, unless you do secure browsing, the hacker may spy on what you're browsing. Next. Ayan. Password attack. A password attack is exactly what it sounds like. So, an attacker trying to access your systems or accounts by guessing or cracking your password. Paano? So, ayan. Yan yung tatlong ways. First, we have brute force attack. This involves running through as many combinations of potential passwords as necessary to hit on the right one. So what happens is like the trial and error method sila to get your password. Second, dictionary attack means the hacker runs a, um, a, runs a dictionary of common passwords, which is used to attempt to gain access to a user's computer and network. So here, they have a list, then through a system, i-enter nila lahat ng words sa dictionary as possible. Password. Last we have is key logging. Key logging relies on getting a piece of malware onto your computer that watches what you're doing and keeps track of what you type, sending that information to a hacker. So, um, di ko naman sinasabi na nangyayari talaga to, pero this attack may possibly occur in public computers. Okay? So, careful din tayo. Next. Ayan nga. So, how long does it take to crack your password? So, here, ayan, sa first column, we have the number of characters. 
Next column is the password composition. So nakikita natin that the complexity and the length of passwords takes a uh, longer time to crack. Ayan po nakikita natin, kunwari sa 8 characters, puro lower case. How long will it take to crack? 4 hours and 7 minutes. Pero pag gawin natin siyang medyo complicated, ginawang capital yung H, imbis na E, ginawang 3. Ayan, 6 months na siya before ma-crack. Then, ayan, sa 12 characters naman, pagka-plain lowercase characters, kita nyo, 2 centuries and 1 decade bago mahulaan. So, ilang years yun. Tayo na mag-compute. Pero pag ginawang complicated, ayan, may uppercase, special characters, may numbers, aabuti ng 15,368 millennia and 3 centuries bago makra. So, di na baling mahaba at complicated as long as you're secured. Diba? Okay. So, ito. Here's a short clip by Jimmy Kimmel from 5 years ago, okay, five years na to, about password strength. So let's watch this. No, we've been hearing a lot about cybersecurity lately, largely because of what happened to Sony. Companies and individuals are more concerned about the safety and privacy of their information than ever. President Obama has unveiled a number of new proposals this week to crack down on hackers, and he plans to address this in the State of the Union speech on Tuesday. And it's great that the government is working on this, but the truth of the matter is we need to do a better job of protecting ourselves. You know, the most popular password in the United States is password123. And as long as we're, as long as that's the case, we're vulnerable. So today we sent a camera out on the Hollywood Boulevard to help people by asking them to tell us their password. And <laughs> this is how that went. We're talking about cybersecurity today and how safe people's passwords are. What is one of your online passwords currently? It is my dog's name and the year I graduated from high school. Oh, what kind of dog do you have? I have a Chihuahua Papillon. And what's its name? Jameson. Jameson. And where'd you go to school? Um, I went to school back in Greensburg, Pennsylvania. What school? Uh, Hempfield Area Senior High School. Oh, when did you graduate? In 2009. Oh, great. <laughs> it's like my cat's name and then just like a random number. Okay. Is you had this cat for a while? Yeah, she's my childhood pet. Aw. And what's her name? Her name is Jolie. Jolie. Mm -hmm. So, like, a password of yours would be Jolie and then a number. Yeah. Like, number one? Uh, like, my birthday. Oh, when is your birthday? Uh, June 12th. Oh, nice. And what year were you born? Uh, 95. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. So, Jolie, 6, 12, 95. Yes. Got it. So, you mean to give my password right now? No, I cannot do that. But we all want to know what it is so we can tell you if it's strong or not. Oh, my goodness. Um... Um, let me think. Okay, one is Tel Aviv. Yeah, four, six, eight, and then Israel. It's it's only three, but it's you know it's uh, for me it's strong enough. Ireland, one, two, three, four. Gemma, one, two, three. Spell G E M M A. Well, most of them are Italian. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, like, so like... Like, what's a good Italian password? Uh, my grandma's name... What's your grandma's uh, name? Uh, Maria. Maria. So, Maria is your password? Oh, yeah, now you know my password. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, the important thing is he le they learned a uh, terrible lesson. Okay, so let me go back to my slide. Okay, so coming up with a long and complicated password is important. Pero important din na sana wag natin to isulat sa sticky note, tas nadikit, nakadikit sa monitor, or naka-display or nakalagay doon sa hint. Diba? Pagka-incurk yung password, may hint. Okay, don't share your passwords. These are very personal to you and you alone should have access to it. 
Okay. Next, cyber threat. We have phishing. Phishing is a form of social engineering where hackers trick users into clicking on malicious links or opening unknown attachments for them to provide sensitive data, such as personal, identifiable information, financial details, and passwords. So hackers will make you think na totoo ang message nila or ang emails nila para hindi mo maisip na skinascam ka na pala nila. Okay? Next, DOS or denial of service attack typically uses one computer and one internet connection to flood a targeted system or resource. Then DDoS or distributed denial of service attack naman uses multiple computers and internet connections to flood the target resource. So the goal in this attack is to render the website or service inoperable. So for example, sa denial of service attack is kunwari sa isang website that gives services. What the attackers do is they flood the site with activity so the system gets overwhelmed hanggat sa it no longer functions. Sa DDoS naman is uh, where cyber criminals attack the network of a servicing company or agency to the point that it no longer operates. So for visualization here, the attacker uses his or her computer to hack networks which becomes botnets or zombies. Tapos these botnets are now used to attack the victim system or networks which makes the victim system unable to perform. So this usually happens say some uh, company set up where networks are used to deliver services. Okay, so yun yung last cyber threat. Now, what is cybercrime? Also known as computer-related crime, cybercrime is a crime that involves a computer and a network. So the terms uh, cybercrime and cyber attack are interrelated. What sets these two terms apart ay yung motive. Some cyber attacks, like earlier, yung web defacement, um, the attackers have a particular objective which may involve a, a political stance, a personal advocacy, or their beliefs. A cyber crime is done solely for personal gain. And of course, some cyber attacks can be cyber crimes. And dito pumapasok ang cybersecurity. Cybersecurity is basically the balance sa lahat ng cyber attacks and cyber threats. And as defined by the International Telecommunication Union or ITU, cybersecurity is the collection of tools, excuse me, policies, security concepts, security safeguards, guidelines, risk management approaches, actions, training, best practices, assurance, and technologies that can be used to protect the cyber environment and organization and users' assets. So in essence, cybersecurity is the state or process of being protected against the cyber attacks or the techniques or measures taken to achieve this. And everyone is already involved in cybersecurity. And we should know that cyber attacks will only ever evolve. And that is why we are continuously improving our country's cybersecurity posture and policies. And also, that is why, na mention niya kanina, part of the DICT's thrust is yung NCSP 2020's 4K imperative is to spread cybersecurity awareness campaigns kasi everyone really needs to be aware. Lalo na sa panahon ngayon na where we are now shifting from offline to online. We are now becoming more reliant and depending, dependent sa ating mga gadgets. Okay? So, ayan. Kaya po important ang cybersecurity. So, kung sino man yung nag-ask um, ng question na yun, I hope this answers that. So, ayun na nga. Sa dinami-dami ng mga cybercrime or cyber threats, what do you think are the top cyber threats in the country ngayong pandemic? Okay. So when the pandemic began, ayan nga, yan yung mga naging cyber threats. Fake news, social media scam, and phishing. Okay. So yun na nga, um, siguro nag-start 
yata nag um, nationwide quarantine around March. Ganon, di ba? Mga ganong month. So, nung nag-start yon ayun nga, maraming mga nagkalat na fake news sa social media. It's alarming how many false information and articles were reported to us in the first few months of the quarantine. Enough na yung pandemic para matakot tayo. Tapos dumagdag pa ang fake news. And Republic Act number no. 11469 Section F penalizes those who create and spread false news about the COVID-19 crisis on social media and other platforms. Kasi itong mga dis, ano, misleading news is very harmful and can cause chaos and panic. Kasi we are all in the height of our emotions. Actually, kahit yung mga legit news na nababasa natin, nakaka-depress. So what more pa yung mga exaggerated and false news, di ba? So the DICT has done its part on countering fake news. So nire-report namin yung mga na-forward sa amin and we have also been conducting webinars spreading awareness on responsible digital citizenship. So please, kayo, do your part. When you see news or information online, always check if the publisher is credible. Check nyo kung sino ba yung nagsulat or nagpublish nun. Okay? Cross-check the information with other sources. I-compare nyo naman sa ibang publications yung information na nakita nyo bago, kayo, bago nyo i-share. Baka headline lang yan, tapos nakadata lang pala kayo, di ba? Then, check the quality and timeliness. Minsan, four years ago na pala yung news at nire-repost lang pala. Then, of course, yun nga, sabi ko nga kanina, check the headline if it matches the content. Huwag basta-basta share ng share. Maging considerate tayo dun sa friends natin na makakabasa nito, lalo na yun nga, pag nakadata lang. Hindi naman kasi binabasa lahat. Let's be mindful full of other people now more than ever kailangan natin maging careful sa actions natin especially online we don't know baka nagko-contribute tayo sa problem instead of the solution okay next ayan marami ring nagre-report na ganito sa amin social media scam dahil nga mas naging babad na tayo sa internet and sa social media madami na rin na nagbabantay sa atin ng mga scammer Ano ba yung mga scenarios ng scam? Di ba ngayon, um, yun na nga, online classes na. Yung iba nag-start or yun na, nagsimula na nga yung classes. So, madaming people of goodwill, okay, mga tunay na mababait, na gusto naman talagang tumulong sa mga students for e-learning. Mga nag-start na mga donation drive para, um, para dun sa welfare ng mga bata na can't afford to join online classes. Sadly, there are people who take advantage of this na ang ginagawa nila, ikakopy-paste nila yung narrative or yung post. Tapos sa ending, ang ilalagay na banking details yung um, sa kanila. Diba? Doon minsan sa mga post, um, if you want to help, um, here's our GCash or here's our bank info. Okay, ang ginagawa ng mga scammers, copy-paste, tapos yung bank information or details is sa kanila. Yung mga ganun. So tayo, if we are thinking of giving, check po natin mabuti kung saan tayo nagbibigay, okay? Sayang naman kasi if our hard-earned money na we want to donate goes to the wrong hands. Okay? Sayang din yung mga tunay na nangangailangan. So ano pa ba? Ayun na, na-mention ko kanina, di ba? Marami tayong mga friends na nagpuput up ng mga online businesses. So, syempre, um, ngayon kasi, pandemic, people need income, lalo na sa iba na wala ng work. And ako, yun nga, I would like to encourage you to support your friends and their businesses. Super laki ng help na magagawa nyo for them. Ayun nga, nakakalungkot ulit isipin na syempre, ang mga attackers, hindi magpapaiwan yan. It's really sad that there are people who exploit the vulnerability of others in this time of crisis. Nadadamay tuloy yung mga genuine and legit sellers. Kasi syempre, pag naloko, may trust issues na ang mga buyers. So baka hindi na bumili ever. So as much as possible, for online shopping, do COD or cash on delivery. Then if COD is not an option, make sure to do transactions through bank transfers. 
So the transaction is traceable. Pero hindi lang din as sellers nakikiblend ang scammers. They are also disguising as buyers. Okay? Kunwari mag-order ng napakadami. Tapos pag na-ship na ni seller, hindi babayaran. Diba? Super hassle nun. Yung ibang social media scam naman, ano pa ba? Kunwari, ano ba? Yung love life, ayan, may nag-report din sa amin. Anong scenario nun? Ija-chat ka araw-araw, kumain ka na. O, oh, tulog na tayo. Anong ginagawa mo? Mga ganon, di mo alam, unti-unti ka nang nafo-fall. Hanggat sa kung ano-ano na yung mga napag-uusapan nyo, mamaya may exchange of explicit photos na or ano ba, magpapaload. Babe, pautang naman, 3,000 need lang namin. Pay ko agad. O kaya, um, pwede namang ano, 5K, nag-away kasi kami ni mama, mababayaran kita soon. Tapos sa huli may I love you pa. Ayun, sige. I love you daw eh. But no, you are being catfished. Okay? Akala mo pag-ibig. Yun pala isang malaking scam. Okay? It's not love. It never was. Diba? Wag na wag kayong magpapaloko. Okay? Madami na pong mangloloko at sinungaling para lang makuha nila ang gusto nila in the expense of hurting others. Kaya tayo, we must remain vigilant and be on our guard sa mga ganitong klaseng mga tao. Okay? Next. Fishing. Ano ba yung fishing na yan? So, ayan nga. We have been assisting people na nabiktima ng fishing. Common reports are getting fished by banks. Pero hindi talaga nila bank yun. So, usually kasi ang scenario dito, um, you receive phishing emails from your banks. Hindi ko alam kung kayo as students, may mga online banks na rin kayo. Pero para lang din may idea kayo. So, ayun na nga, may phishing email. Now, the email contains external links that redirect you to a site that looks legit. Tapos dun, it asks you to encode your personal information and other confidential and financial details. Tapos, mapupunta ka sa isang site, ma-redirect ka ulit, asking na your OTP or one-time PIN. Then suddenly, you get a text receiving your OTP. So you think, legit naman. Kasi baka nga naman part ng process to, ganun. So ngayon, itatype mo yung OTP mo dun sa fraudulent site. Then, surprise, wala nang pera sa bank. Okay, so ganun yung mga usually yung mga scenario. Yung iba naman, um, nagle-level up na kasi yung mga attackers ngayon eh. Ngayon, they, yung ibang modus nila, they spoof the numbers of some banks or telcos. Parang nasa isang thread lang siya sa phone mo. So, syempre, may isip mo na legit yun and galing talaga sa kanila yun. Pero institutions have lately been releasing advisories about these fraudulent activities using their names to scam you. Remember, banks will never ask for your OTPs or your personal information through email or websites. So, kayo kung may time... Pumunta kayo mismo doon sa bank, tawagan nyo mismo kung talagang kailangan i-update yung accounts nyo. And when you receive suspicious messages, always check the grammar of the message. Kasi institutions are very professional. Pero yun nga, some hackers nagiging formal na rin ang words nila. Kaya be aware. Tapos, do not click external links in suspicious emails. Siguro ang mas makarelate sa inyo as students. Siguro kung... Hindi nyo alam na nahack na pala yung kaibigan nyo, na may sinasend sa inyong link. Sabihin, uy bro, si Mars. Check nyo tong link na to, may nangyari kay, kay, ano, kay girl. Kaya naman, may intriga kayo, iti-click nyo yung link. Tapos hindi nyo alam, compromise na pa rin pala yung, ano nyo, account nyo. So, mga ganong klaseng scenario. Okay? So, ayun na nga. Also, another thing, Consider it a red flag pag may ultimatum yung mga messages. Like sasabihin urgent or kailangan na kailangan. Pwede mo bang i-click to? Need lang namin. Okay? Kasi pag nagmamadali ka, hindi mo na maiisip. Hindi, wala ka ng time mag-isip. So, sige friend ko naman to. Eh. Sige galing naman to sa bank. O galing naman to kay Globe. Mukha namang legit. And ayun nga, may namadali ka na. Within 24 hours, dapat makomplete mo to. Ma-answer mo yung survey or something like that. Okay? So, ayun nga, for extra caution, tawagan mo yung friend mo kung talagang chinachat. Kung siya ba yung nagchat-chat sa'yo or pagka sa Globe naman, check their website. Minsan, 
nandun naman talaga kung may advisory sila. Okay. So, ayan na nga. Um, pwede nyo rin i-check yung aming Facebook page. Ayan, CyberSecGovPH. So, meron kaming Fish No More campaign. Nagpo-post kami ng mga sample phishing emails or messages. Then, we ask people to point out what's wrong dun sa email or message. So, makikita nyo yung ibang sample dun is, kunwari, i-update na yung Netflix account nyo. Mga ganun. So, kasi nga, minamadali kayo ng hacker. So, hindi nyo na naiisip. Kaya everyone talaga is pwedeng maging, maging victims. Okay? Ayan na nga. Okay. So, that ends that. So, like what I mentioned earlier, rushing and the lack of awareness make the perfect setting for a successful cyber attack or cyber crime. Pag nagmamadali ka kasi, yun nga, pag natataranta, and you don't allow yourself to have time to think about things, eh, wala na, game over na. Tapos, kunwari, wala ka pang idea or wala kang awareness sa mga latest modus, it could easily fall victim to cyber attacks. Okay? Kasi kung mapapansin nyo sa mga narrative sa uh, mga nababasa nyo mga post, kadalasan ang sinasabi nila, hindi ko na malayan or mukhang legit naman eh. O kaya di ko napansin na loko na pala ako. O kaya akala ko totoo yun pala hindi. Ayun, humuhugot na lang pala. Kaya yung mga bagay talaga na minamadali, walang magandang patutunguhan. Huwag po kayo magmadali or magpanik. Don't rush things. Okay, dadating, dadating din po yan. Para sa'yo, okay, joke lang. Ayun na nga, next slide. So, yun na po, napakadaming cyber attacks and cyber criminals na umaaligid at hinihintay tayo to let our guard down. Buti pa po sila hinihintay tayo. So, how to be cyber safe in the new normal? So, ngayon, nasa bahay ka lang, natagal ka nang di lumalabas, andiyan ka lang using your home Wi-Fi, your devices, and madalas kang online. So, how can you be safe? Number one, back up. As zero risk does not exist, secure your files on another disk. Ano meaning nun? Always back up your files. Okay? Mag-invest kayo in external hard drives or in cloud storage. Don't wait for another ransomware to happen. Always back up so that if ever may mangyari na incident ulit, prepared ka. Okay? To help you with um, how to back up, Always remember the 3, 2, 1 backup rule. So doon, sabi doon sa rule na yun, you should keep at least 3 copies, okay, of your data. Store 2 copies on different storage and make sure one of the copies is located outside. Okay, so we need you to back up your files, lalo na baka na may mga research papers kayo. Sayang naman kung yung pinagpagura nyo is biglang mawala, parang bula. Okay, so... Please, back up. Second, secured browsing. If you recall the man in the middle attack, if by chance na maloko ka into connecting to a hacker's Wi-Fi instead of the legit public Wi-Fi, you must use HTTPS. Okay? If you use public devices, use incognito mode. Okay? Do secure browsing para hindi ma-risk na ma-expose yung information mo. Huwag mong hayaang mag-snoop ang hackers sa browsing activities mo, okay? Browse securely and stay cyber safe today. So next, VPN or Virtual Private Network is a software that can change your IP address and encrypt your internet traffic. So use VPN especially if you are handling sensitive data or you are transferring sensitive data data offline onto the cloud or vice versa okay using vpn kasi makes the connection encrypted and it will easily be intercepted by hackers and any other dangers waiting on the internet and sa image nakikita nyo galit ang hacker kasi he cannot intercept sa activities ayan galitin natin yung mga hackers next let's use antivirus and make sure na yung mga ginagamit na antivirus ay updated. So, mag-invest kayo dyan. So, wala naman kami particularly na... Um, 
ini-endorse or ini-encourage na specific antivirus. So, basta marami namang available dyan. Basta pag-aralan nyo, check nyo, and of course, sana i nyo rin. Next is use firewall so that pag may na-visit kang websites that may contain malware, it won't affect your computer. So, ayan, this is how firewalls work. They block malicious data and files that are on the internet para hindi makapasok sa inyong devices. So earlier, pinag-usapan natin how long it takes for you or your password to get cracked and how you should keep them strictly private. Important then to use different passwords for different accounts because if a hacker gets access to one of your account tapos same lang yung password mo across all your accounts, edi wala na. Sa kanila na. So, an 8-character password is dead. Kita nyo naman kanina, di ba? Hanggang 6 months pwedeng makuha agad. So now, we encourage that you use 12 characters with a combination of uppercase, lowercase, numbers, and special characters. Ayun na nga, don't use dictionary words kasi now you know na meron ng dictionary attack. Some even recommend using a passphrase, okay? Hindi na password. Para mas, eh kasi pag password, baka mas madaling hulaan. Kaya ngayon, parang, eh nga, ni-recommend passphrase na. Yung iba naman, kilala ko yung sa dialect nila, yun din yung password nila. Eh, mahirap din i-crack yun. So there is also this tip, okay, kasi syempre may mag-iisip kayo, meron kayong personal Gmail nyo, meron kayong school Gmail, Tapos meron pa kayong Facebook, may Twitter pa kayo. So, ang dami-dami yung account. So, how can you formulate a very strong and complicated password across all of your accounts? Okay. So, may tip kasi kami. Ginagawa namin to sa mga caravans namin. So, when you create a long and complicated password, first, think of your favorite song. Okay? Ano ba mga... Hindi ko kasi nakikita yung chat box pagka nagpe-present ako, kaya hindi ko kayo ma-ask. Ano ba mga favorite song ninyo? Sige, isipin nyo yung kung ano yung favorite song nyo. Tapos, ang um, mangyayari, kunwari, sige, ako mag-iisip ako ng song. Dahil October na, ilang days na lang Pasko na, um, sabihin na natin yung kay Jose Marie Chan, yung Christmas in Our Hearts. Sige. Ano bang, okay, ano ba yung first na di ba? When, I see girls and boys selling lanterns on the street. I remember the child in the manger as he sleeps. Okay. Sige, wait lang. So share ko yung screen ko sa word para mas may visual kayo. Okay. And nababasa ko na yung mga comments. Worship songs remix po sana. <laughs> Superman. Wait lang. Okay. Hindi, sige. Yun na. Alam naman natin lahat, di ba? Yung Christmas in our hearts. Tsaka Pasko na eh. Sige. Present now. A window. Okay. So, anong song yung sinabi ko? When, whenever I see... See? Nababasa niyo po ba? Lakayan natin ang font. I see girls and boys. You know, basa ako, I want it that way. Yes, army ako. Charot. Hindi, oo nga. Hindi ko lang matype yung dynamite, kahit English yun. So, anyway, whenever I see girls and boys selling lanterns on the street, I remember child Kanta din kayo, kahit di ko kayo naririnig. I remember the child. And the child remembers me. The joke lang. I remember the child in the manger as he sleeps. Okay. Maka yun, alam nyo na tong ano na to eh. Tong technique na to. So, ayan na nga, ang ating favorite song. Um, ang tag dito. Anong para natin i-formulate yung password natin? gagawin po natin ay kunin natin yung mga first um, letters each word. 
Ano ba yan? Wait lang. Yan. Teka lang ah. Hanggat sa makabutay ng 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I remember. Sige, pabuti natin sa child. Para naman buo ang ano. Buo ang Pasko. De joke lang. Ayan. So, ayan na nga. So, anong password dyan? Kunin nyo lahat ng first letter. W-I-S-G-A-B-S-L-O-T-S-I-R-E-C. O, oh, diba? What a word. With gab slot certs. So, diba? Pag nakikita natin, it's not a word. It's not even a phrase. So parang yun yung magiging base password natin. So tuwing magta-type ka ng password mo, huwag ka naman kakanta. Kasi lahat ng mga nanood dito, all 250 people here knows na how you formulate your password. So yun, it's up mo lang naman to eh. So kunwari yan, kasi kung favorite song mo naman, hindi mo naman makakalimutan eh. O kaya second favorite song mo. So kunwari yan yung base password nyo. Ang gagawin nyo, lalagyan kunwari ng underscore, tapos kunwari Google, GM. Kunwari, para sa CLSU. GMCLSU. Pero ano lang, tuwa kayo maging creative kayo. Tapos kunwari, random number, ano bang date ngayon? Um, 10-08. Pati na may anniversary ngayon. Kaya, ano pa? So yan, kunwari yung sa school, ano nyo, Gmail. Tapos kunwari, sa Facebook, FB. Tapos yung months rin yun ng ex nyo, de joke lang. Kunwari 19. Ano ba? Maging creative kayo. Ayan, that's one tip. Meron kayong base password. Okay. Tapos, haluan nyo na nung mga iba pang kung paano nyo siyang gawing complicated. Kunwari yung O, edi gawin yung zero. Ano ba? Yung S, gawin yung dollar sign. Kasi kayo, you should make your passwords talaga complicated. Kasi para hindi kayo mahap, pahirapan natin yung buhay ng ating hackers. Okay. We must not let them win. Tama? Okay. Stop sharing na. Balik na tayo sa presentation. Okay. Ayan. Window. Ayan na nga. Tingnan nyo. Nakasulat dito. Sorry, but your password must contain an uppercase letter, a number, a haiku, a haiku, a hieroglyph, and a blood of a unicorn. Pero syempre, joke lang naman yan. Pero hindi joke yung gawin yung complicated, ha? Okay, next. Secure your devices. So, ayan, may tips tayo. Be careful of what you plug into your devices. Remember, your devices is very personal to you. It knows so much about you than yourself. Marami nang nakastore dyan. And I bet kahit hanggang sa CR, daladala nyo yan, bit-bit-bit-bit nyo yan, mga telepono nyo. Yes, telepono. Mga cellphones nyo. Kaya kayo, huwag kayo basta-basta kung ano mga sinasaksak nyo dyan, lalo sa laptop nyo. May nakita lang kayong hard drive na external hard drive na 2 terabyte. Uy, jackpot! Saksak nyo agad. Wala na, compromise na yung laptop nyo. Huwag ganun, ha? Mga, kung nakita kayo mga flash drive, napakalat-kalat, sayang naman 36 gig. O kaya kung ano mang gig yan. Don't, please. Next, don't mindlessly install third-party apps directly from the internet like APKs. So, i-verify nyo muna if ang i-install nyo ay safe. Or as much as possible, install from Play Stores or App Stores. Next, do not forget to update your computer systems, mga phone systems, yung applications. Remember yung WannaCry, pinarget nyo. Luma ang OS. Next, be mindful in connecting to free public Wi-Fi networks. Pero ayun na nga, pag magko-connect kayo, as much as possible, don't access financial accounts. And do secure browsing. Remember the S in HTTPS. Next, secure your online accounts. Use 2FA or MFA. Ano yun? Set your social media settings to private, okay? Only add people you know. And yung 2FA... MFA niyan, mga two-factor authentication or authenticator. Then, multi-factor authentication. Yung bago kayo mag-login, um, mag-ask pa ng 
parang verification. So, that's an added layer sa account ninyo. Okay? So, ayun, isingit ko lang din yung about sa usage ng mga third-party apps in social, social media. May mga nauuso before and ngayon. Okay? Pero yung before, may nauso yung sino yung artista ang kamukha mo? Sinong makakatuluyan mo? Or anong itsura mo pag matanda ka na? O kaya yung iba naman, talaga naman, nakikiuso pa talaga. Anong itsura mo pag naligo ka? Diba? So before knowing the answers to these very intriguing questions, hindi ba you need to click first na you allow these third-party apps to use your information? How about, bawas-bawasan natin ang curiosity natin, okay? I'm sure your data is far more important than knowing kung sinong artista ang kamukha mo. Okay. Next, only add people you know. Bata pa lang siguro kayo. Ako kasi nung bata ako, tinuturuan na ako. Do not talk to strangers. O kaya, baka familiar kayo sa friends na stranger danger. So, i-apply natin yan sa cyberspace. Um, take extra caution online. Remember, manami ng social media scammers waiting for you to let your guard down. Okay, do not engage. Then last, do not do ATMs. Ano yan? Pera? Hindi. Hindi yan pera. Ang ATMs, yan yung tinatawag na at the moment post. Huwag niyo reveal yung mga current location niyo online. Kasi you don't know who's talking or monitoring your posts and what intentions they have. Mamaya may nagsusurveillance sa'yo dyan na friend mo. So may mga hindi maganda, mga binabalak. Hmm. Huwag na naman i-delay mo ng konti, di ba? Late, sorry, late post. Happy birthday. <laughs> Joke lang. <laughs> Basta ganon, wag masyadong at the moment. Lalo na pag nasa labas, pili kayo. Um, right now, pumunta kami ng Manila Bay. Eh di malalaman na walang tao sa bahay niyo, di ba? Okay, so we sort of discourage that. Ayan, meron na naman tayong panunoorin. Pero ipe-play ko siya sa Chrome tab kasi hindi siya maririnig dito. Wait lang. Okay, let's watch this. Oh, it's a normal type. Yeah. Insecta. Do you believe? I feel two insects on your your rug. Can that? Yeah. Cleaners. Slovenia, Slovenia. So what? In a moto, Urania. Pass it up. Zenith. Oui, oui, bien. I have some friends. Julie, the. Yeah. We don't leave the slave. Drivers. The vierde daar zwijg. Die meestal over, dus dat weten niet veel mensen. Who is my spies here? Une maison rouge, balcon, plan. Yeah. Ik zie geld, ik zie transacties. Maar kent je rekeningnummer van buiten? Ik denk dat ik het wel weet. Het staat wel negatief op je bankrekening. Ja? 9, 7. Last month, mm -hmm. you spent 200 euros on alcohol. Vorige maand... 300 euro aan kleding gespendeerd. 8, 5, voor een huis dat van eigenaar gaat veranderen. 195.000 euro. Ja, eigenlijk. 41. Ja. Serieus? Ja, dat is juist. Oh my god. Oh man. Ah, dat vind je eng. And so be vigilant. Please secure your online accounts and be mindful of your online activities and what you post and share online.
be careful din with the people you share your life online with. May features naman sa Facebook that you can customize your audience. Pwede mong ilimit. Make use of security features available. Okay? Okay. Let's go back. Ayan. Ayan. Privacy and decency. Okay, napaka-importante nito. Common cases that we receive and forward to the PNP or NBI is yung hacking of accounts. Tapos dun sa account ng mga victim, dun sa messenger nila, may mga exchange pala sila of, is, of explicit and sensitive photos between them and their partners. At ang files na yun ay strictly for their partner's eyes only dapat. They didn't know that one day ay mahahack pala sila. So to make matters worse, nahack na nga sila. Na-blackmail pa sila gamit yung mga photos nila na nandun. There's nothing wrong naman with sharing these things online. Private message naman, di ba? PM sent nga eh. Pero kasi, always think of the impact or consequences of the things you do and send online. Isipin mo it is, if it is really necessary and if you are ready, if ever, for the world to see it. Kasi hindi mo talaga masasabi. Every, sabi ko kanina, di ba? It's not a matter of if, but when you will be attacked. Okay? Always give importance to your privacy and decency. Kasi iba na talaga ang mga tao ngayon. You can't trust everyone. Which leads to my next tip. Awareness and attitude of distrust. Huwag mong hintayin na magkaroon ka pa ng trust issues. Super nakakatroma yun. Yung not knowing who to trust dahil may na-experience kang hindi maganda. Ngayon, dapat maging praning ka na. Don't wait for a tragic incident to happen para ma-change pa yung perspective mo. Kasi it really hurts. Diba? Practice mo ngayon ang attitude of distrust. Practice nyo yun. Maging skeptic kayo sa mga nakikita nyo online. Ganyan, tulad nung sa fake news. Huwag kayo basta-basta naniniwala. Always triple check. Um, okay? Sa mga, yun nga, mga nare-receive yung messages, mga baka phishing na yan. Okay lang maging praning ka online kasi yun naman talaga eh. Dapat kasi talaga i-secure natin yung sarili natin. Okay? Mas okay na yung mag, ikaw yung mag-take ng measures kesa, kesa sa nangyari na yung crime. At yun, hahabulin natin yung attacker. Okay? So, bawas-bawasan ng ano natin, yung curiosity natin kung sino mga kamukha natin. Give importance to your information online. Tapos, ayun nga, awareness. Maging aware tayo. Be aware of the latest trends of cyber crimes and cyber attacks. Yung mga bagong modus or mga bogus. Okay? Be on guard. Attend webinars on your free time. Marami dyan mga available webinars. Madaming available resources online that you can read or watch. So be vigilant, be aware, and have the attitude of distrust. Okay? Lastly, it is imperative na pag naging victim ka ng cyber crimes or if you see cyber threats, you report and ask help from authorities. And where should you report? Ayan, according to Republic Act 10175, also known as the Cybercrime Prevention Act, only two law enforcement agencies are authorized to act on cybercrime reports in the country. The PNP ACG and the NBI are mandated to exclusively handle cybercrime cases. So ayan, screenshot nyo. Here are the contact details of the PNP ACG and the NBI CCD or Cybercrime Division. Kindly take note. So, meron silang mga telephone, mobile numbers, pati Facebook page, meron po ang PNP. Okay? So, for cybersecurity issues or technical inquiries, usually kasi for critical infrastructure or national government agencies or any in-depth cybersecurity-related concerns, okay, you may get in touch with the official and national CERT of the Philippines, which is the CERT PH. So these are the numbers that you can call and the email that you can email, okay? So ayan, we also have the National Privacy Commission or the NPC for privacy concerns and ayan, meron din tayong Office of Cybercrime sa DOJ. 
Alright, so cybersecurity should be a whole of government approach. Hindi lang yan sa mga techie, sabi ko nga, di ba kanina in-introduce ako ni Sir Amir, hindi, ang background ko hindi naman um, computer science or IT. Okay, everyone has the right to be aware and cyber safe. And be cyber safe because ito nga, as said by Newton Lee, as the world is increasingly interconnected, everyone shares the responsibility of securing cyberspace. And for you to be secured, invest in cybersecurity. Invest in the latest trends. Okay, yung pag-attend nyo dito sa webinar, that's an investment. Kasi um, you use your time to learn knowledge, information. Kasi yun nga, remember, important ang awareness. So cybersecurity is not expensive compared to the cost of having a cyber attack. Okay, mag-invest kayo sa tama bago pa mahuli ang lahat. Okay, so again, please check our Facebook page. We have advisories, online campaigns, as well as ongoing webinars. We are also on Twitter and Facebook. Ay, sila sabi ko okay, so YouTube pala. We are also on Twitter and YouTube. Please like, follow, and subscribe. Chat nyo lang po kami if you have cybersecurity concerns or questions. May magre-reply po sa inyo. Okay? So that ends my discussion. I really hope may natutunan kayo. And sana i-share nyo rin to sa mga kakilala ninyo. You don't know sino mga who might need this, okay? Let's help everyone be aware and be secured. Ayan. Thank you all for listening and stay cyber safe. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Anna, po. Sana, finish na. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, po. Salamat Shopee. Salamat Shopee. Thank you po. Outs gege. Kararating ko lang. Outs gege. One game mo. One game mo. Salamat po. Salamat Shopee. Among us. Tara, one game, one game. IGN nyo. Pale, pasale. Hi, Jonali. Okay. So, again, uh, pa-off mic po muna, everyone. Okay. Thank you, Miss Clea, for the very informative talk and tips you gave on how to be cyber safe. Okay, so everyone, this is the first webinar code. So ito po yung ilalagay ninyo doon sa my um, Google form na sasagutan ninyo. So the first webinar code is at CLSU, all capital letters. Okay, so moving forward. Okay, so for our last session, second and last session for today, so we're going to talk about setting up a secured environment. Okay, so... This speaker that I'm about to introduce to you, okay, he is a member of the National Computer Emergency Response Team and Cert Division of the Cybersecurity Bureau with more than two years of experience in incident handling. He is a graduate of notable training courses, namely Joint Cybersecurity Working Group Intermediate Course conducted by the U.S. Federal Bureau of Investigation. Intermediate Malware Analysis Course conducted by the Council of Europe in partnership with the International Criminal Police Organization or Interpol and Cyber Incidents Handling Course conducted by the International Telecommunication Union, ITU. He also participated in the Cyber Defense Exercise with the re Re-occurrence CIDR conducted by the, by the Japan International Cooperation Agency or JICA and NEC Corp. Lastly, he received a Certificate of Commendation from the ICT Secretary for Performing Tasks as Member Team Lead for Subtask Group IT. Task Group Signal under the Joint Task Group Peace and Order of the Committee on Security Peace and Order Emergency preparedness and response. Okay, so without any further ado, I give you Sir Daryl Justin M. Taparas. 
Uh, hello, good afternoon, everyone. So I hope okay tayong lahat dyan, sa safe uh, from the virus, safe sa ating mga bahay. So yan, good afternoon. Share ko lang yung screen ko. Uh, ito na. Excuse me. In a minute. Okay. Ayan, confirm ko lang kung nakikita nyo na yung screen ko. Ah, uh, yes, sir. Ayan, thank you very much, sir. Uh, again, good afternoon. So, I'm Daryl Caparas. So, thank you, sir, Amir, for that uh, introduction. So, as you, so, dagdag ko lang sa introduction. Ako, si, uh, mahilig din ako mag, alam uh, CTF. So, if some of you are familiar with CTF, it's Capture the Flag. Uh, Capture the Flag is a game known to cybersecurity. It uh, it helps some of us na ma-improve yung skills. So, dun sa mga hindi masyado mahilig magbasa, uh, gusto nila ma-improve yung technical skills nila. Uh, CTF is one of the way to, uh, para ma-improve yung skills natin. So, it could either be for incident response, investigation, hacking, kung anong track na gusto natin. Uh, Hacking is for that penetration testers and vulnerability assessors. So, yun yung mga track na yun. So, red team, blue team, etc. etc. So, yung kakunta ko lecture na yun, actually, medyo similar sa sa inanong-play. Pero dadaan ako nalang yung mga parts na iba. So, that magkaroon tayo ng time para sa ating Q&A. Uh, kasi gusto ko rin medyo maging interactive kahit pa paano yung ating uh, activity ngayong araw. So, mas gusto ko rin yung minsan nagsasagot ng question sa iba. Mas... Ano ko sa'yo, mas um, naniniwala ko sa parang mas natututo yung iba pag nagtanong sila, then nasasagot na may tanong nila. So, yun. So, first ko, eh, since nakapag-discuss naman ni si Claire with regards to cyber threats, so, ipakita ko na lang itong picture na to. So, bakit ba delikado? Or why is it na mas delikado pa yung physical na war compared to cyber warfare? So, ang stealth bomber pa kasi, uh, stealth bomber is a type of jet na so ang pressure niya is around 1.5 billion to 2 billion so stealth fighter yung mga jets na iba pa so it causes around 80 million dollars to 120 million dollars so cruise missile is 1 million dollar to 2 million dollars but cyber weapon costs from 3 to 50 thousand dollars so from there pa lang ang laki ng diferensya so ano pa yung pwede magawa ng mga cyber weapon na to uh, one of the worst case is mapatay or ma karon sila na apekto sa ating energy sector, power sector natin, they can shut down uh, those power grids remotely. So that's a possibility kung masyado tayong digital age. So since we're very much transitioning sa digital age, so ito yung isa sa mga concern natin, yung mga cyber weapon na to. Kung paano siya i-utilize, for the good ba or for the bad? So, ito rin yung isa sa mga type ng mga enemy na pwede natin ma-encounter sa cyber world. So, script kiddies are those unskilled individuals who use scripts or programs developed by other, others to attack computer systems and networks. So, these are those, kunyari, nag-search lang sila ng mga exploit online, ginugil nila exploit for this system, then ginamit na nila without knowing how that program works. As long as gumagana yung mga exploit na papatakboy nila yung programs sa gumagana or programs sa gagamitin nila dun sa system, okay na sa kanila yan. They do not need to uh, understand it, they just use it. And unfortunately, still, a lot of systems are being affected. So, dun tayo, nag yung ibang administrator, dun sila nagkukulang sa pag-check ng mga news online, updates with regards to new vulnerabilities, new exploit na pwede maka sa system nila. Uh, another type of enemy na pwede namin encounter is hacktivists. So, hacktivists are those hackers that attack information systems with the intent to advance a particular social or political cause. So, kung napansin nyo kanina, may sinishare din si Clea na some kind of defacement from Louis So, kung yung uh, laman ng 
defacement na yun is like a political cost for polit political cost so this can be a kind of activist yung type ng pag-atake nila so yun so cyber criminals naman ito yung mga gusto mag-gain tulad sinabi ka ng yeah. so organized groups who use computer to commit criminal acts such as identity and fraud so sila yung mga may financial gain ang target nila mostly so ta mostly target nila yung mga individuals na gusto ah uh, may mga banks uh, online na may ilig mag online transaction so sa and such also yung mga ibang financial aid institutions like yung Shiner ni Clea kanina na Bangladesh noon so isa yun sa mga klase so state sponsored ito yung isa sa mga pinaka critical or pinaka delegado when it comes to cyber or the enemy so politically motivated cyber threats that are used to conduct sabotage and espionage so ito yung pang cyber war na talaga yung dating so ito yung mga ini sponsor ng kanilang government in order to conduct attacks so when they're supported by their government, so mas malaki yung kaya nilang gawin. They have the funds, uh, military support, and etc. Cetera, et cetera. So weapons sila. These are some of the weapons lang na pwede nilang gamagamit. So yung malware that, uh, or virus. Virus is a malware that attaches itself to program or file when executed by the user can replicate itself to infect new host. So normally yung mga malware is those programs na ininsertan ng certain field or code dun sa loob ng program niya. Uh, para pag niran yung program na yun, may infect na yung user. So, true dyan naman, uh, non-replicating non malware that often acts as a backdoor for a controller to access the affected computer. So, common sa mga Trojan virus or Trojan malware are those na uh, nag, pin, papanggap sila ng isang uh, application, uh, common application na pwede nang pagkatiwala na isang user, then pag niran ng user na yun, pwede sila makompromise. So, worm naman, a type of a standalone virus that uses the network to replicate itself in order to spread to other computers and cause damage. Kayang gumapa, so, sa iba-ibang network, so, connected yung ibang computers, then com vulnerable yung computer na yun. So, malaki yung chance na ma-infect din siya. So, kaya normally, kung ang isang computer sa isang enterprise companies, excuse me, uh, compromise, ang uh, ginagawa sa kanila is yung computer na yun, uh, ina-isolate. So, just like sa atin, sa state natin yun, if a person is infected by the virus or um, yeah, kung ano mang malware yung nakalagay doon sa computer, ina-isolate sila. So, they're being quarantined para hindi na makahawa sa iba. So, rootkits, malicious software is designed to hide the existence of certain processes or programs from normal method of detection. So, ito yung type of malware na pinakamahirap ma-detect. So, yung mga strategy naman ng mga enemy na pwede natin may counter. So, exploit. So, exploit is an attack that takes advantage of a vulnerability. So, nakwento ni Clea kanina, paano nakakompromise sa ibang uh, computers by the NotPetya, uh, WannaCry, etc. So, those computers are vulnerable to certain exploits. So, si, Pet, si WannaCry, I uh, so I remember, ang um, inexploit niya is the SMB. So SMB is a service, so Windows system. So server message block is this uh, common, kung yung iba sa atin nag-aaral na network na sa IT side, um, yung SMB is used uh, for file transfer, file server, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So yun, na compromise yung mga computers ng hacker, yung mga nung isang certain office gamit yung vulnerability na yun. So na ransomware sila, and yun, na-lockdown yung computer nila, hindi nila nagamit. And hinihan sila na lang. So, so zero days, uh, malware attack that exploits a previously unknown vulnerability in a computer application. So, ito yung mga malware sa so wala pang signature. So, when I say signature, hindi pa siya recognized ng mga solutions provider, security provider, or wala pa nagagawang uh, fix, or talagang hindi pa noon yung uh, vulnerability na yun. So, yung mga nauna, na exploit nila to through yung tinatawag na zero day. So, I think na discuss na rin to ni Clea, so may botnet and DDoS. So, so medyo magkaasama itong pag ginagawa itong attack na to. So, botnets are being used and so these are being utilized to conduct DDoS attacks for certain application na kayo gusto i-down ng isang hacker. So, for example, uh, yung mga nag-totorin dati, I know some of the 
applications na download sa torrent may kasama bot so those bots are being used uh pwedeng uh, for example yung iba lang para makakuha sila or mapagpadala sila ng certain or huge traffic papunta sa isang website na gusto i-down ng hacker so isa pa sa mga enemy strategy so command and control uh, command and control is communication channel between the attackers and compromised systems so in this, dito naman yung kunya refer sa uh, yung computer ko is compromised na then yung hacker pwede siyang magbato ng command. So since compromised ang computer ko, they, he can take on uh, take over it. So anything that he wants to do, lalo lalo na kung high privilege yung user niya, meaning administrator account niya, administrator level. So mapapansin niyo kasi sa mga window system niyo, pag nag-create tayo ng na account, meron dalawa, standard user and yung administrator. So, kung makagawa yung isang hacker na administrator level privilege, so most likely, uh, maaaring goodbye doon sa computer unless gawa natin ng some kind of uh, remediation activity. So, phishing, uh, attempt to acquire sensitive information such as, such as username, password, and my mascara as trustworthy entity. So, katulad ng mga videos sa pinakita ni Clea, those are just... Uh, attempt sa social engineering just like this shit. So, yeah. So, discuss ko lang din po cyber kill chain. Uh, cyber kill chain is the uh, common use model in cyber security. This is to the stages of a cyber attack. So, dito, binibreak or pwedeng makip track either kung hacker ka, pwedeng makip track kung nasan ka, or kung yung nasa responder, check mo kung nasan na ba yung hacker. Anong stage siya sa ginagawa niya. So, this was created by Lockheed Martin. So, so step one, uh, reconnaissance. Information gathering or acquiring intelligence. So, kung technical side is yung computer side, uh, common na kinukuha dito is yung IP address, domains, open ports, plugins, and services. So, bakit kailangan yun? <coughs> uh, and isa sa mga, or tatlo, ang requirements in order to conduct a successful attack. So, share ko sa inyo ito. Ano, ano itong mga bagay na to. Unang-una, ang hacker, kailangan niya malaman kung sino yung target niya, kung sino ba to. So, that's the IP or the domain. It could either be you, yung kao mismo, pangalan mo, search kanya sa social media, pwede yun. <clears throat> Pero, when it comes to that website, it's the IP or the domain. Yan yung kung sino ka. So, alam, kung alam na ng hacker yun, next na kailangan niya is the open port. So, just like what I've said earlier, SMB is a type of port. So, kung open to, <clears throat> Isa yun sa pwedeng mga way or pwedeng maging pintuan ng mga hackers para makapasok ng system nyo. <clears throat> so, the third one is the vulnerability to that system. So, either of these three na mawala, magiging unsuccessful yung attack ng isang hacker. So, bakit? Kung hindi niya alam kung sino ka, so hindi niya rin malalaman yung open ports or ano yung pwedeng mga pintuan pasokin niya. So, kung wala naman yung pangalawa, meron kilala mo nga siya, pero wala ka naman pinto ang pwedeng pasukin. So, most likely, unsuccessful yung attack mo. So, if you have both, kilala mo siya, and alam mo yung mga pinto na makapasok, pero those uh, doors, those uh, windows are locked. So, walang vulnerability yung mga pinto na yun, walang vulnerability yung mga daanan na yun. Most likely, unsuccessful talaga yung magiging attack. So, let's keep that in mind kung ang... Uh, in the future, maging ano tayo, uh, system administrator, so yung mga nag-aaral pa, so yun. The next one is for the human side. So kanina, marami na tayo nakita ang social engineering attacks, so paano ginagawa yun? <clears throat> so one thing nga is yung pag-conduct na interview, kung mapapansin nyo kanina kay Jimmy King na show. So that's one of one way to conduct a social engineering, one way to con or to gather information. <clears throat> Another way is to email physical delivery or so <clears throat> in social media. So like so, sinabi nga ni Clea, keep uh, mas maganda kung private yung pagkaka uh, yung particular this uh, tayo as an individual. Maging ingatan natin yung privacy natin. So wag tayong share ng share ng kuha no sa social media. Bakit? Uh, <clears throat> your name could be your potential password, birthday uh, man sarin yun ang jowa mo, uh, anniversary, uh, what else, pangalan na alaga, uh, 
mother's maiden name, common yan, na ginagamit sa mga banking, na ask yan sa secret question. So, yun. Yun yung mga critical, uh, so just the sample of critical information na pwede makuha ng isang hacker or ng mga bad guys sa atin. So, if I were the attacker, pwede akong gumawa ng, kung maalala nyo yung sinabi ni Clay na dictionary attack, itong mga information na to, pwede kong ilagay sa isang dictionary or certain uh, word list or, kunyari, gawa ko ng word file na puro pangal or text file na puro information na nakuha ko dun sa social media mo uh, and other stuff. So, gaining people's trust by using social engineering. So, yun. Katulad ng pag-interview kanina. So, that's kind of one kind of social engineering. Also, another one is, uh, napansin ko common to ngayon, yung mga OTP na hinihingi sa chat. So, never nanghihingi yung banking ng OTP since in, kaya sila gumawa ng application para dyan. So, it is designated to be sent those one-time PIN to this certain application, hindi para isend sa ibang tao. So, kung may mag-request sa inyo, kunyari may online banking kayo na kinable, so never ever send that one-time pin. Kasi mo, marami kami, marami na na-report sa amin na na-compromise through that kind of method. So, ano pa? So, one of our, uh, so, isa sa mga napunta namin exercises, cyber exercises, isa sa mga red team, isa mga team namin. So, kalaban namin is blue team, so para maging pamilya kayo. Red team is those who conduct attacks and blue teams are those who defend their side. So, kami, make isang agency nag-set up ng kanilang infrastructure, kami atak, try na may atakihin yun on the outside. So, hindi kami maka-infiltrate, but when we try to conduct phishing or social engineering, uh, doon kami nag-successful. So, from there, nakuha namin yung password na pinakritikal sa kanila. Yung password na yun, nakuha, nakuha namin lahat na kailangan namin sa buong uh, setup nila. Uh, personal information, uh, control dun sa server, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So, yun. Kaya ingat tayo pagdating dito sa mga bagay na sinashare natin. Uh, pag tiwala through online and such. So, yun. So, preparing the malware for the attack is the weaponization part. So, ito yung second part ng cyber kill chain. So, dito ginagamit nyo yun, yung information na nakuha dun sa reconnaissance, tinitailor kit nyo yung mga malware or yung mga virus para magamit dun sa vulnerability na nakita ng hacker. So, they custom, if they could be the renowned customize or zero day. So, known are those na pwedeng madownload online, nagawa na ng exploit tong certain vulnerability nito. Then others naman, yung pwedeng customize nga. Uh, customize meaning, kung hindi man makalusot tong attacker na to dun sa antivirus ng isang computer, customize nga ng kukulti, then yun gana na. Zero day, uh, ito yung mas critical, most likely ito yung mataas ang chance na mag-success dun sa isang computer. So delivery uh, stages, so the malware. So example is file attachment ng email, external devices, and malicious website. So, ingat tayo sa pang, kunyari, nag-email tayo or sa social media, may mga attachment na files, ingat tayo sa pag-download nun. Kung hindi natin kilala kung sa kanina ito nanggaling, so, might as well na plug natin siya as malicious. So, kung hindi naman sensitive yung information na laman, tingin natin hindi sensitive yung information na laman ng application or ng file na yun, pwede tayong gumamit ng mga online application like virus total. So, pakita ko siya sa inyo. Um. Okay, so here's virus total. So, saan nga mag ginagamit si virus total? Pwede tayong gumamit, pwede natin siya gamitin in order to check profile kung malicious ba siya. So, keep in mind na hindi lahat ng file pwede natin i-upload dito. Baka meron tayong confidential files na pwede na i-upload dito. So, yun. Uh, pwedeng makita ng ibang tao kasi once you upload something in virus total, magiging public yun. So, kailangan yung mga, info, or mga files na i-upload natin dito. Kailangan hindi yung critical or sensitive. For example, meron ako dito ng file sa aking desktop na Rufus. So, si Rufus is a application or software na ginagamit para 
uh, mag create ng bootable devices and format the de format removable devices and such. So pag chine ko siya, yeah, magita nyo clean. So kung isa kung yung uh, application na dinownload natin, yung file na dinownload natin is malicious. So pwede yung ma-flag ng virus total na isa dito magiging detected siya. Then papakita niya kung ano siya, yung mga details niya, relation, behavior, etc., etc. So 'yun. So kung hindi tayo tiwala doon sa application sa file na na-download natin, pato natin siya kay virus total, pwede siya. Another tool is hybrid analysis. So hybrid analysis is a website then, almost same like virus total. So dito pwede tayong magbato ng mga application then and such. So 'yun. Ano po ba yung pwedeng gawin kay virus total? So pwede rin tayong mag URL search. Mean, ano yung ibig sabihin ba URL search? Meron sinin sa atin na website na gusto natin bisitahin. So, pwede natin ibato dito yung website na yun. Then, titignan ni Virus Total kung may malware ba yung website na yun. From there kasi pwedeng, may mga website kasi na pag binisit natin, automatically pwede may ma-download tayong file. So, that file is a drive-by-download malware. So, automatically mag-download sa nanang file sa computer natin, iraran yun ng attacker, then compromise sa computer natin. So, So yun, kaya ingat tayo guys sa mga pag-download natin ng files so we can use this or we can utilize these applications and such. So balik lang sa slide ko. Sorry. And so next stage is the exploitation. So the action of making use of the or of and benefiting from vulnerabilities. So exploiting legacy systems, just like what uh, uh, Clay have said. Uh, yung mga unpatched systems natin, uh, dito nakakapasok most li mostly yung mga hackers. So, ano bang pwedeng gawin doon? So, some of, uh, some of systems like Windows 7, XP, Vista, yung mga old operating system na to, uh, can be hacked. Uh, kahit anong patch mo dyan, hindi na mapapatch yan kasi wala na support yan. So, there's a lot of exploit that may run to that. So, kung ako yung hacker, alam ko kung saan yung computer na yan. Then, hindi ko kailangan ng physical access computer na yun. I can just run certain commands, then, yun. Pasok na yung system na yun. Exploiting old versions of software. So, ito yung mga, mga softwares na hindi na mapatch. So, common dito yung mga pirated softwares. So, ingat tayo. Huwag tayong gumamit ng pirated softwares kasi most of the pirated softwares cannot be patched since hindi to supported kasi crack lang to. Then, kung hindi natin mag-patch to, pwedeng gamitin to ng hacker para makapasok to dun sa system mo. Other stages of, uh, sa installation naman, dito binabato yung ibang malware na gusto mong dali ng hacker. Kunyari, naka-establish siya ng connection to sa certain application. Ngayon, pwede siya magdagdag na another malware. Purpose ng malware na yun, para maging backdoor. So, the malware prepares itself to be taking or ready for taking orders. So, pag nakapagbato na ng another application or uh, another process yung hacker dun sa computer mo, most likely, uh, kunyari, mabura man yung unang attack, meron pa siyang babalikan na iba. So, kaya parang backdoor. Kunyari, nasara mo nga yung harapang pintuan nyo, pero may backdoor kayo na bukas, so nainiwan nung uh, bad guys. Then, so C2, so command and control, dito ngayon ini-establish yung connection from the attack, from the compromised computer to the attacker. So communication is stealthy as it blends in the organization network. So hindi siya na basta-basta na detect even do sa enterprise. Uh, networks sa mga companies, kahit kano kalaki yan, if makompromise yan, mainso lang na si ito. Um, kung masyado magaling hacker, kaya-kaya niya itagoy sa sarili niya in their system, in their environment. 
So, action and objectives, dito nung yung gagawin nung hacker kung yung gusto niya gawin. Di ka dealer B, kumuha lang na yung data sa loob, sirayin yung data, or encrypt yung mga data niya. Then, they ask for a ransom para magkaroon sila ng financial gain. So, ito, isa mga common na witness ng mga tao, even sa mga routers natin sa bahay, uh, common na hindi na natin pinapalitan yung admin password doon sa Wi-Fi routers natin. So, you should prevent that kasi nag-google yun. So, kunyari, PLDT yung gabi kong router, then PLDT, some, uh, PLDT then yung model ng router, default password, default, uh, default username, default password. So, kung connected ako ngayon doon sa Wi-Fi nyo, then kaya ko i-access yung admin panel, then yun. Pwede na makaroon ng buong control doon sa network nyo sa bahay. So, ingat tayo. Kaya kailangan, hanggat maaari kung may Wi-Fi tayo sa bahay, palitan natin yung password. Even yung username palitan natin para hindi tayo basta-basta makakompromise. So, ito. Na-explain to ni Clea kanina. Types of brute force attack. So, dictionary attack, key logging, and etc. So, brute force attack is... Ito yung type of password attack na malaki yung chance na mag-success. Bakit? Hinuhulaan nyo lang. Ang problema lang dito is yung oras. Depending dun sa gaano kahaba yung password mo. So, yan. Balikan ko lang to. So, yan. So, katulad ng mga pinakita ni Clea kanina, even uh, yung password mo is alphanumeric with symbols. Kung eight character password dyan, madaling crack yan. So, depending dun sa bilis ng computer. So, Ano ba yung safe na password? Sinabi ni Clea kanina, kailangan pahabahin. So, hindi mo naman kailangan sobrang complicated ng password mo na hindi mo na halos matandaan. You can use passphrase. So, ito yung sample. Words na hindi basta-basta pinagtutog na. Ma hindi siya ganun kadaling pagsamayin. Mas maganda kung itong mga words na to is local dialect. Like from Visaya, uh, Bucano, etc. etc. So, from there, mas nami-minimize yung potential perpetrators yung mga hackers na makagain ng access sa mga accounts natin. So, isang tip ko sa inyo, uh, make your password at least 15 characters long. So, that's the magic number for password. Bakit hindi 14? So, there's this service na ginagamit sa Windows. So, common man itong ginagamit sa ating lahat, mga Windows system. Uh, meron itong tinatawag na old service na Landman or Land Manager. So, this land manager is a service na ang, ang supported niya lang na password is up to 14 characters. So, para hindi, uh, kahit sobrang tagal na itong service ito, nagagamit pa rin siya ng mga updated versions. Dahil dun sa, uh, uh, what do you call this, yung reverse or yung downward compatibility ni Windows. Meaning, yung mga older versions kailangan supported pagdating dun sa new version. So, don't may possibility na makakompromise yung user. Bakit? Kasi kung at the minimum, 14 pa long yung password nito, pwede nilang gamitin yung landman service sa'yo in order to compromise your computer. If your, your password is 15, so, dinidisregard na ngayon ng attack yung 14 character password na yun kasi hindi siya nag-fit dun sa requirements ng landman service sa'yo. Kaya, 15 character password is the magic number for passwords. So, kung tanungin nyo ako, gano'n baka haba yung mga password ko, password ko is at a minimum uh, 20. So, 20 characters. So, hindi ako nag-uulit ng password as much as possible. Nang isa, hindi ako nag-uulit. Talagang per account ko, isa lang yung ginagamit yung password na yun. Then, sa iba, ibang account. Bakit? Uh, kung yung hacker, mag-gain niya or makuha niya yung password mo, pwede siya mag-conduct ng tinatawag na password spraying. So, password spraying is pwede niyang gamitin itong uh, password na nakuha niya sa ibang mo pang account. So, kung makompromise yung isang account mo, most likely makompromise yung ibang account mo rin using that method. Kasi common naman na ginagamit na account sa mga social medias is email. So, yun. Pwede nila i-try kung nangyari. Uh, Juan de la Cruz at gmail.com yung email mo. Juan de la Cruz at gmail.com yung Facebook mo and other medias mo like, for example, yung Dropbox mo uh, sa ibang platforms, even your online shopping, Lazada, Shopee, ganun din yung password mo. So, most likely, makompromise ka talaga. Kaya, uh, never use or reuse your password. Hanggat maaari, isang account is one password. 
So, paano mo nyo ba matatandaan kung gaano ka, kung sobrang dami na ng password mo, paano natatandaan to? Kasi sobrang hirap nga naman yung dami mga password, nakakalimutan mo naman. You can use password manager. So, search nyo lang sa Google, password managers, magbibigay ng mga sample. Meron tayong tinatawag na LastPass, OnePass, KeePass. So, yun yung mga type of password managers. Then, marami pa. Explore natin kung ano yung mas, mas fit dun sa kailangan natin. <coughs> so, yan. Mabunggit na ni Clay yung mga social engineering na yan since sobrang common yan. Natak. Social media, banking, ito sa market to ng darknet. Sample lang to. <coughs> So, binibenta yung mga social or yung mga credit card information sa isang market sa dark net. So, kaya yung information na di lang naman credit card number ang binibenta sa dark web, even your personal information, kaya sinabi nga ni Clea. So, ang personal information natin is our, one of our most uh, precious asset na kailangan natin protectahan. So, actually, itong slide na to, medyo technical na talaga siya. Uh, hindi na siya ganun sobra applicable kung nag-aaral pa tayo. Pero, turo ko na rin siya briefly. So, defense in depth, itong method na to. So, defense in depth is nag apply tayo ng certain parameters each layer. So, from data to application to host to network perimeter. Siguro mag-focus na lang ako sa data and application. So, sa data, pwede tayong gumamit ng mga encryption technologies such as yung kung professional version yung Windows sa ganun mo meron yung tinatawag na BitLocker. So BitLocker uh, encrypts certain yung drive na kailangan mo i-encrypt para if ever ma-hack yung computer mo hindi basta-basta mababasa ng hacker yung mga files mo. There's also this called VeraCrypt then marami pang iba na pwede natin explore. Sa application naman, meron tayong tinatawag na mga host-based firewall and WAF. So WAF is for the website to use this firewall para sa mga systems natin. Kaya yung mga Windows firewall natin, ah, uh, nandyan. So, antivirus, kaya sinabi na ni Clea, update antivirus, use antivirus. So, tatanungin nyo ako ano ba yung pinakamaganda antivirus. Um, sabihin ko sa inyo, ang pinakamaganda antivirus is kung ano yung meron kayo, utilize mo siya. You do not need na napakaraming antivirus. Mas ingat lang tayo sa paggamit natin. I-patch lang natin yung mga applications natin. Iwas tayo sa pag-download ng mga... Dun sa, iwas tayo sa pag-download sa mga website na hindi naman natin kilala talaga. So, we can use virus total para ma-check natin yung mga website na yun. Kung trusted ba talaga. Yun. Then, pwede natin mag-search pa ng iba pa. Pwede naman tayo mag-search ng reviews from that website para maiwasan natin yung mag-compromise ng computer natin. So, sa mga gumagamit ng Windows system, isa sa Windows system internals na pwede niyong gamitin para ma, kunyari, pain niyo, compromise yung computer niyo. Isa to sa mga tool na pwede niyong gamitin para ma-investigate yung computer niyo kung compromise ba talaga. Free lang siya, nandadownload siya sa Microsoft, dun sa download.sysinternals.com slash files as sysinternal suite. Libre to. So, meron siyang 70 tools na nasa loob. So, ito yung isang sample tools na nandun sa loob ng sysinternals. Si Process Explorer. So, ito, sobrang helpful niya pagdating sa mga pag-kill ng antivirus, yung process ng, I mean, pag-kill ng virus, ano, malware. Kung ma-recall niyo yung sinabi kanina ni Clea na WannaCry, isa sa mga behavior ni WannaCry ransomware, yung malware niya kasi, yung software na yung so kasi sa computer, nagkikreate siya ng child process. So, kung task manager lang ang gagamitin natin, to end, di ba, common sa atin yung pag nag-hang yung computer, control, delete, task manager, end task. So, hindi ka basta, gum basta basta gumagana sa ibang malware yun. Kasi yung ibang malware, nakikreate sila ng child process, then the child process, pag in mo tong isang process na to, that child process create another process, tanggal sa na mag ng siya, hindi na siya na-stop. Pero using Passage Explorer, pwede mong erectic yung certain process na yun and kill mo yung buong process chain. So, isa yun sa mga uh, benefit ng paggamit nito Process Explorer. Process Monitor, pinapakita niya lang kung yung certain application mo ba may communication sa ibang files, sa registry, ini-edit niya ba? So, critical yon. Then, ito, common to. So, kung familiar naman kayo sa mga application nirarun nyo araw-araw, pwede nyo i-check yung Windows Prefetch folder nyo. Baka kasi may, yung computer nyo may nirun na application na hindi nyo nalalaman. Check nyo lang dito. So, ano ba yung gamit ni Windows Prefetch folder? Ito, dito naka-record kung ano yung mga nirun natin application yung programs. 
makita nyo siya sa C drive, Windows folder, then pasok kayo ng prefetch. Pero kailangan yung user nyo is with administrator privilege. So, ito, common na uh, tools na ginagamit ng mga hackers. So, possible na makita nyo sa prefetch, Mimikatz, Gzip Dump, or tools to steal password hash for using to expand the, the internal infiltration. So, WC is a tool to log on to another PC, uh, remote logon. Then, HTRN is ZX proxy, a tool to transfer packets for collecting their internal information. Then, RDP and PSXEC is a tool to remotely control and remotely execute arbitrary programs. So, yan yung mga type ng application na pwede natin bantayan dun sa Windows Prefetch folder. Yan. So, that's all for me. Thank you very much, everyone, for listening. So, so hopefully, marami yung online na share. So, question and answer. Okay. So, thank you po, Mr. Uh, Sir Daril, for the very informative talk on how to be secured on cyberspace. Okay. So, at this point, we're going to conduct um, Q&A. Okay, just a second. Okay. So, Q&A na. Um, Nag-select lang po ako ng... Uh, questions on our Google uh, Sheet and then sa mga questions from YouTube and dito sa chat natin, Google Chat. Okay, so this question is for uh, the both of you po, Sir Daryl and Miss Clea. So ang question po is galing kay Mark Russell. Okay, so ang question po niya is how cybersecurity affects students now? Hello. <laughs> okay, so yeah. So how does it affect students now? Since uh, most of the transaction na ginagawa, even online learning. Actually, dati pa, even wala pa nung online learning, sobrang vulnerable na natin pagdating sa mga tasks. Dahil pag-isip ng halang natin, sinabi ni Clea, phone yung gamit natin, hindi nasa bahay na tayo, nag-phone yung paramihan. So, so that's why connected. So, so much vulnerable na natin pagdating sa cyberspace. Nalo lalo na kung di tayo aware. Yung sa gilid, yung malaki. So, yan. Pa Baka may dadagdag pa si Clea. Ano ba? Paano ba? Ayun na. Paano, anong, ang question is, paano ma-affect ko ng cybersecurity sa mga bata? Tama ba? Ayun oh, na. Vulnerable, yes. Ayun. Um... Well, may kinalaman ang students sa cybersecurity kasi unang-una nagpo-phone kayo at connected kayo sa internet. Kaya nga, um, ano pong mga courses nyo? Iba yata dito, IT ang courses, di ba? Kaya nga, kahit na regardless kung ano ang course mo, dapat um, involved kayo sa cybersecurity kasi lahat naman tayo pwedeng mas scam. Kasi cybersecurity, ano siya, before the fact. Okay, sinasecure may sarili mo. Um, you do measures para maging secured ang devices mo, ang online accounts mo. Okay, siguro naman since lahat ng nakikinig dito, meron kayong online accounts. Okay, so the fact na may online accounts kayo is dapat involved na kayo sa cybersecurity. Okay? Alright. Uh, thank you, Miss Clea and Sir Daril. Okay, next question po ay galing kay Tracy for... Ms. Clea, ang question niya po is, are there ways to completely or permanently remove information from the online platform? Um, anong, parang malawak yan. Kunwari, Facebook, ay mo nang mag-Facebook, ganun. Something like that po, ma'am. Okay. Um, kung nandito pa si Tracy sa loob, Pwede expound niya. Pero kasi, kunwari, um, yung email mo, registered ka or subscribed ka sa mga newsletter or mailing list, meron naman dun, pwede kang mag-unsubscribe. Okay. Ayun. Yes, ano po. Ano ba? Tsaka may niyat na naman dun eh. Kunwari, totally de-delete mo yung Facebook. May mga 
guidelines naman sila doon, ina-explain sa yun na talagang totally delete na yun. Pero yun nga eh, um, may ibang cases kasi na yung information mo, talagang it's perpetually online na. Unless nung nilagay mo siya online, is private. Okay? Hindi mo siya pinablik. Kasi mayroon tayong tinatawag na digital footprint. Okay, lahat tayo meron na yun. Okay. okay. Ayan, so, And, yung kalimang or, Sana okay, next question po um, for Sir Daryl naman, galing kay MC. Mas vulnerable po ba ang PC with old uh, Windows OS version? Uh, sagot ko po dyan, isang malaking yes. Kasi yung mga old version ng Windows, hindi na siya support So meaning, hindi na nag-update to. Kung di na ito na-update, maraming exploit na pwedeng gamitin dito para makonfirm sa computer na to. So, yun po. Okay. And then last question po for the vote, uh, both of you, galing po kay John Vincent. Can the government access our laptops or cell phones without our permission? Um, kung ako pong sasagot, no. So, yun po. Okay. Yun din sagot ko no. <laughs> Alright. Okay. So, ay ayun po. At this point, dito po natin muna tinatapos yung question and answer natin. So, para po dun sa mga hindi po nasagot ang tanong, i-email na lang po namin sa inyo yung sagot ni uh, Miss Clea and Sir Daryl. Okay. So, next. Okay. So, for the closing remarks. Okay. So, I'm going to call... Um, the provincial head of DACT, Nueva Ecija. Okay, so this is Ma'am Sinag Abelio. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I hope um, everybody can hear me. Na, um, actually, I'm not doing the closing remark, uh, but I will be um, introducing to you the uh, our director will be uh, will be doing the closing remarks. So, um, um, Director C has been in the government service for 32 years, and he was an uh, uh, engineering board top notcher in 1983. Uh, he holds the, a degree in electrical engineering from FEU, and then a master's degree in um, business administration from the um, Ateneo de Manila University. And he is also a career executive, uh, service eligible. Um, which only reflects his academ excellent academic and professional achievements. Um, he is currently the director of the DICT Luzon Cluster 2, covering both Central Luzon and Calabarzon region. And our, as for the regional director, he also leads in forging strategic alliances with stakeholders, uh, different councils, LGUs to facilitate and implement various programs and projects of DICT such as Tech for Ed, uh, Digital Jobs Workshop, Free Wi-Fi for All, Electronic Business Permits and Licensing System, uh, Lens Cybersecurity, and among others. Um, let us all welcome uh, Engineer Reynaldo TC for his closing remarks. And also thank you, Simon Cyber Security Bureau, who takes time out of the American Corpus to start speaking. So, to our government, we will give them a little more help again when it doesn't have a little bit. In this COVID 19 pandemic, I have a nice size of the government back in the city. And now, my government will be the computer time. I'm going to talk to you. 
much for um, um, uh, having us um, and also I would like to thank um, Ms. Leia Reyes and uh, Mr. Daryl Caparas for being our resource speaker for this um, first um, initiative with um, in partnership with uh, um, Central, uh, Central Luzon State University. Um, again, uh, I would like to greet you everyone. Um, good afternoon and have a good day. Okay. Um, thank you, Ma'am Sinad. All right. So everyone, for the second webinar code, okay, so this is hashtag DICT. So ito yung ilalagay natin na sagot dun sa hinihinging codes dun sa may Google Form. Okay. And then guidelines and reminders last. Okay. So yun nga, digital certificates will be provided given that um, nag-fill out kayo during the webinar, answered post-evaluation form, and then pass the quiz with at least 70% points. And then use the webinar code. Okay, and then third input valid and active email address when filling out our post-evaluation form. Cut-off is October 9 until 4 p.m. And then lastly, you can watch and review the replay at the URL. And then there's the link. Okay, so if you want to follow the ICT and C CLSU on Facebook, ito po, nakalagay po yung kanilang mga pages sa slide na to. And then, thank you for attending our webinar. Okay, 